you know, in today's day and age, you can reach higher levels of performance than your parents did. You can reach higher levels of performance than your grandparents did. But I've always been of the opinion that the foundation starts with proper nutrition and proper training. But in today's day and age, the food that we're getting, the food that we're ingesting in our body just doesn't always have what we need. And that's where supplementation comes in. We're really fortunate today to be joined by uh, the owner of a company that puts out high quality supplements and is going to talk to us a little bit about how certain supplements can be built into a lifestyle to give you the life that you're looking for. Welcome to the Evolve Podcast, a podcast about disrupting your life to spark new evolution. Evolve your body, evolve your mind, evolve your soul, and evolve your tribe. And now it's time to disrupt. Yeah, baby. Here we go. And with that, folks, we want to welcome you to another episode of the Evolve Podcast. Joining me from his basement in Oberlin, Ohio, is the most interesting man that I know, W. Miles Riley. Welcome, Miles. It's not a basement, <laughs> even though you walk down to get to it. I have windows everywhere <laughs> and sun 360 degrees. Well, there's just like certain times when I look at you and it feels like a basement, it feels like a dungeon. Uh, but uh, in the mountains of Utah, I am Steve Cutler, and today's guest, uh, we are really excited to be joined by Joe Miller. Uh, Joe, thanks for joining us today. No, happy to be here. Thanks for having on. I, I will say I did opt in the household arrangement to take the basement, the office in the basement with a seven and 10 year old little girls at home. Uh, the wife got the fancy <laughs> nice out, uh, the nice one upstairs. So I have a few spiders and critters every once in a while, but I get a lot of peace and quiet down here. So I, I, I took the trade off. So I yeah, am officially in the basement office. Oh, that's a basement. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. We got a couple of basement dwellers here. Well, Joe, um, I, we were talking before the show started that I think it was, it's going to be uh, appropriate for you to kind of give a little bit of your background, but uh, you and I met several years ago when we were working for a large uh, fitness organization. Uh, we were both leaders in that organization and uh, made a connection there. And then fortunately, recently just got reconnected through a few different conversations. And I've been fascinated by watching what you're doing. And I think um, so I'm really excited to dig in, but tell our listeners a little bit about uh, your background and what you're doing right now. Yeah, I appreciate that. No, it's great to uh, connect and kind of walk through this. So I'll try to do my best, keep it high level, give an overview. But um, yeah, I was originally, you know, going to school to get into uh, uh, teaching exercise science and, and health. I was going to be a, a gym teacher and, uh, you know, always had a passion for kind of um the health industry as a whole. So as you mentioned, um, I actually had some people pretty close to me pass away of um, some health related uh, illnesses that could have been prevented um, through some, you know, changing the, the care of themselves. And so I got really into that. And that's when we, you know, worked at the fitness industry and kind of uh, climbed the corporate ladder, if you will. And that's where, where we met and a lot of learned a lot of great things in that time frame. And, and similar to you had the whole list of certifications behind the name and degrees and all that fun stuff. And then, but I think, you know, that was very helpful and great, but I also think seeing just thousands of people over the years and all those different cases and realizing how everyone's so much different, um, that formal education is helpful, but there's nothing like just good old fashioned kind of working hands on with people and seeing what happens there. And so that was a, that was great. Definitely an ascending career for me. And then, you know, uh, like many people, COVID came and, uh, I've, I've always done, some different consulting things. I, I really just love working with people and processes. I say, and, you know, as long as they have a great, great quality product, I think it's a, the triple win and, and I want to engage with that. And so I noticed, uh, you know, an opportunity in the telemedicine business. And so, uh, when kind of all the health clubs were shut down, I started working in that industry and primarily, uh, what my business, uh, the company, uh, did provide services in, was more of a elective treatment protocols. So things for um, hormone management, um, thyroid conditions, sexual dysfunctions, 
hair care, acne, things of that nature. So it was more of like a, along the lines of like an optimal lifestyle. So how can people kind of operate at their peak? Not, not treating, you know, deficiencies or extreme diseases, although there was some work we did, some pretty exciting things in fertility. And um, so that was a great, uh, great time to kind of dive into the sciences there and really just geek out on the pharmacology and see, um, you know, again, looking at thousands of people's labs, but then also having the background of seeing people actually in a health club setting or just doing life and uh, how those things um, kind of intertwine together. And uh, a few months back, decided to kind of transition out of that, just kind of have some plans to recalibrate and, and relaunch some things in late uh, 2023, actually, the back half of 2023, we're going to be relaunching it with a slightly different uh, structure and focus there. But in between there, I, th I believe uh, you had Justin Harris on recently, um, my, a good yep. friend of mine for over 20 years, worked with a lot of professional athletes, kind of high level guy, and uh, I had a chance to partner with him at First Attachment. And that is our supplement company of uh, firstattachment.com is where kind of you can find all of our information. But what really intrigued me about this opportunity, uh, short term and long term kind of overview was um, way back in the early 2000s, actually, I used to train with Justin, we were both coaches, we competed in different physique and strength sports. And um, he never wanted to get into supplement business. And always, I used to get in a bunch of trouble. Now at the time, again, I was late teens, early 20s, that kind of just on my way out of, uh, out of the, the household there while I was in college, but I'd always get in trouble because he would have the five or six different ingredients because he just felt like nothing was really good enough out there in the marketplace. So we'd always mix our own stuff. So he would always have his clients yeah. do that. And we'd have this big combination. And so short of the long, I knew he had great quality products. So I kind of took a look at that and um, uh, he had some things, some things open up where I can join the team and kind of slide in there and help take us to that next level. So right now we have um, a pretty good, good offering as far as, uh, you know, supplementation and how that kind of fits in the people's lifestyles. Which I'm sure we'll get into at some point, but uh, you know, later we look at kind of how that synergistically can work both with medical optimal lifestyle and just helping people fuel them through the day. As we know, you know, our food quality is not as good. Our life is two to three times as busy. And so, uh, you know, good quality food is always going to be the best number one, but if there are times and many times in many of our lives where we're going to need to have some form of supplementation to kind of help us fuel that and, and live that optimal lifestyle that we're all striving for. Yeah. And, you know, Miles and I were talking about this earlier today. I, I've kind of at times sat on the fence with some of these concepts, right? Hormone replacement therapy uh, years ago, I and steroids, all that kind of thing. I was, I was uh, against it because I would say, well, Hey, you should just be able to do all this stuff on your own. And then uh, one of the guys that I used to listen to and follow his content uh, regularly, Charles Poliquin, who I think, um, you know, many people would say is probably the most successful coach in, in the world at the time. He had trained more Olympic uh, athletes, Olympic medalists, professional athletes. He made a comment one time where he said, you know, the difference between human beings and animals is that human beings have goals. They have performance metrics that they want to achieve. They're busy and they say they, they set these goals and these objectives. You never have an eagle that's sitting up on its perch that says, oh, I, I ate 1,235 mice last year. And so next year I'm going to eat 1,335 mice. Um, and so the difference between humans and, and animals is we set goals. And so we have these performance metrics that we want to achieve. And that really shifted my focus. And, you know, several years ago, I had reached a point in my health journey where um, I had a couple of health challenges and went to the doctor and found out that my uh, hormones were way off. My testosterone had dropped almost to zero. I mean, it, my estrogen, my estradiol, everything was, was uh, skiwampus. And I had to work through my doctor and then through a dietitian, uh, you know, another nutrition coach, a couple of strength coaches to help to get me back to where... Um, I could just function. And it was, this wasn't even something where it was like, hey, I'm in great shape and I want to get even better shape. And right. so I went through hormone replacement therapy uh, for a short period of time and saw the benefits of that. And like you, once the pandemic hit, I made the shift from uh, the health and fitness industry into the Medispa uh, industry. And in that business, we did hormone replacement therapy, uh, a lot of the similar uh, things that you talked about earlier. I saw a lot of benefit to that. And so it really shifted my mindset uh, relative to how we can optimize our performance as human beings. 
talk a little bit, Joe, about when you were working with people through hormone replacement therapy and some of these other modalities, um, what are some of the benefits that you saw uh, that, that people were getting out of it? Yeah, I think um, the first thing I noticed was, you know, and, and this is a, a thing that was really, really important um, to me is the benefits of testing and, and follow up and just constant connection with the patient. So I'll kind of talk about why that was important. So a lot of guys, uh, I'll start with the guys and I can get to the, the women as well. I have some pretty interesting cases with women. And actually that's part of um, the relaunch as a whole slew of services that are specific to women's and, and their, um, their unique hormone profiles. But, you know, a lot of guys, they would just, they were having issues if it was um, depression related energy, you know, drive, um, and, and not always, not always sex drive, you know, libido and, uh, it can be, you know, a, a physical response or it can be a, a mental as well. So there's a couple of different um, facets to look at there. Um, but they just felt off and felt like something wasn't right. And, and many of them, again, you know, your, your, uh, anti-anxiety, anti-depression, uh, uh, medications and treatments out there, they have a place for those who, who need those. What we found was some, uh, of the patients we interact with, we actually would see that, you know, it was some of the medications in your traditional uh, approach were just kind of masking some of those other uh, situations that were going on that we found in blood work as far as the lower testosterone or just imbalances in our hormones. And so yeah. that was really the biggest, you know, benefits. And some it makes them worse, right? Right, exactly. And that was some of the biggest benefits to, to see there was just an improvement in overall mood, you know, positive well-being. Uh, things of that nature. Again, a lot of what we're talking about is therapeutic dosages, just to get them to where they, you know, should be um, at the at the at the appropriate levels, and monitoring that with their other health profiles. But I would say some of those are some of the bigger things. And then also, you know, they can find that they have a little more energy, a little more confidence, um, maybe a little more focus that they would have, you know, had if their profile wasn't in rough shape. And then they can kind of progress from there. And um, you know, maybe pick up a new healthy habit that kind of coincides with that. And then they start working on the nutrition because they don't feel so beat up and, and behind because maybe in the past they would fail after, you know, three, four, six weeks and um, just didn't have that same vigor and drive to kind of see it all the way through. And I think that's a really important yeah. thing for people to, to think about in that practice is uh, in regards to like testing and frequency of testing, because that was something we did notice was maybe there was less medication needed, or maybe it was needed acutely to where, to get someone kind of moving in the right direction. Um, it wasn't always just a, you know, a one and done kind of thing, which I know there's a lot of uh, operations out there that'll do that. Well, and there's, and I think there's a lot of ways to get to success. You know, I mean, like you're talking about when you, when you test somebody and you know uh, now, okay, here, here are the options. Here are the strategies that we can go through. I think back to my, my particular situation, I was eating well, I was exercising by, by all outside perspectives, you would have thought that uh, nothing was wrong and, or that I was doing everything right. But I felt horrible. I had no energy, brain fog. I really like, there were times where I had a hard time just even getting out of bed and walking up the stairs. Uh, I was out of breath. And when I went to the doctor and she looked at everything and said, well, yeah, because your hormones are completely off. So we couldn't yeah. start with nutrition. We couldn't start with exercise because those were already there. And I think even if people are not exercising or don't have uh, the nutrition as a foundation, this can be a way for them to, to uh, kickstart and get going into a much healthier uh, realm. So I love the idea of the, the testing piece. Uh, so you started to see people uh, increase their energy. What were some of the other benefits that you saw? Yeah, as I was mentioning, you know, energy, um, body composition change, um, I think confidence, um, some blood lipid profiles improving there overall, just function of health. Um, it is kind of cascaded throughout the whole body, which was always pretty, pretty good to see. Um, I think also, you know, the level of detail in testing. So we're talking more primarily right now, you know, we're talking about testosterone, but also a lot of how the, the thyroid functions is really interesting. So this give you an example and general practitioners are great. They have the best of intentions um, and they're going to do what they can to, to run your, your panels and get a look at that. However, admittedly, even to the many I've interacted with over the last couple of years or several years, um, you know, they're going to run like a high level TSH panel and just get an overview of your thyroid. And right. Several of our patients, what was really nice about what we would do um, 
Uh, and some of the docs just either didn't have access or didn't have the, the training on this because it is a specialty. Is this go a little bit deeper? So for example, um, your T4 is, you know, your inactive part of your thyroid, your T3 is the active and people would say, well, you're, let's say the doctor did go T, TSH, T4, T3. Okay. Those are in a good spot. Well, there's actually another layer deeper because then there's reverse T3. What percent of that T3 is reverse T3? What percent of it or what part, how is your T3 uptake? So I had a family member actually that all their levels look great, extremely frustrated in and out of dieting, in and out of exercising. We're talking seven or eight years, progressively kept putting on weight, progressively had to have an afternoon nap or pound coffee, you know, in the middle of the day. And one of the things that was found as we got really granular with the, with the testing was reverse T3 being down. And so there's some ways to kind of reverse engineer that through treatment to help fix that, give them that boost. And then, you know, just kind of monitor to there to try to minimize how much treatment was needed. So I think, uh, you know, going deeper on just the surface of saying I have low testosterone, but finding out why I have, you know, I have low energy and maybe some dysfunction in my thyroid, but let's find out why, or, or whatever the case is of an irregular menstrual cycle. Let's find out why, like what specifically is off in that balance, what's causing it. And then try to try to attack that. And a lot of my, um, overall philosophies that with the physicians I've worked with, um, was more of a combination of, you know, health, natural pharmacology when needed and lifestyle change. You put those three together. So it wasn't one of the three, um, or two of the three, a lot, uh, many, many times, if not all, were all kind of a combination of all three. So I did talk a little bit more about that reverse T3. That's, I know that thyroid hormones are not just extremely simple. And you hear that and people say, well, my thyroid, thyroid was off or the doctor said it was fine. And then another doctor said, no, talk deeper about uh, reverse T3. That, that's not something I'm familiar with. Yeah. Reverse T3 is basically an isomer of T3. It's, um, it's a, another, uh, basically an inactive form. So the, the tissues cannot, um, use that form of thyroid to do what it needs to do essentially. So if there's a higher amount of that in your system, um, that can actually kind of work against your, the active part, your T3. So, you know, it's kind of heard the so analogy working as like a blocker or how does that work? In, in essence it does, but it doesn't, um, it, it can't really, it's inactive. Um, so it's in the form of T3, but, but slightly different. So it's an active form. And then okay. also your body's like in your tissues, there's an ability to uptake T3. So that T3 uptake is something that can be off as well. So if that's not as efficient, you're going to have a, on a blood work, blood panel, you're going to have the proper level of T3, but what does proper mean? It's a range of the populace, right? Like at that time and that period in time, oh, whenever the lab values were selected. So my T3 says I'm, you know, I'm okay, but really I need to be a few ticks, a few marks higher because maybe my uptake isn't the same as yours. Right. So there's, I there's other you. factors to kind of think of that just to, without having a blood panel in front of me, keep a kind of high level overview of how that all works. But so that that's True. where you use testing as like a, a range and a guideline. Um, but you still have to work with the patient and have a lot of interaction there. And, um, uh, I think that's what's key is that there's a lot of back and forth and communication and it's not a, here's the marker, let's just treat it. Cause that, that's kind of when you're treating an illness in many cases, or, you know, some, uh, disease or something that, that affect like your, your traditional kind of treatment, generally you're going to have like one or two things to kind of knock that out, but it's much more complex when you're trying to get to the peak of, when I say peak, I don't mean like over the peak. I just mean like where you should be. Um, so yeah. when you're trying to get to that, where you're optimal, exactly. And that's where some of those, you know, differences go in, um, you know, relative to that. It's, it's the same thing I would just bring up about, uh, now I'm drawing a blank on the actual time period. I want to say between 1990 and then now we're in, you know, the 2020s, but the actual scale, the values used by the lab testing company have went down, um, by, you know, over a hundred nanograms per deciliter for total testosterone. So essentially what the normal has changed over the last, say roughly 30 to 40 years. And that's not the testing company's, you know, issue. They're not wrong for that. What they do is they take this massive amount of data and they decide like, this is the range. And they just kind of put that out there. So if you think about that, wow. what is the, you know, what does normal truly mean? Um, and that range does change. So just to take it a layer for, I got a couple of kind of fun stats for you that I, I pulled up a little while back. So there was a uh, Danish study in the 19 or 
a Danish study showed like men in 1920s versus 1960s. So in the 20s to 60s, they had a double digit um, from the 1920s to 1960s, double digit decrease in total testosterone levels in males. Um, you take it a step further. Now this is to the 60s, a double digit decrease. Yes. Wow. And then the next layer up from that, let's see here. One percent uh, per year on average, they drop from 1987 to 2002. So that's 15 percent decrease from 87 oh to 2002. Now, that was a separate population. Obviously, it wasn't the same men. But right. when you start to compound that over over time, you know, um, I think there was a, a Forbes article that said you're half the you have the man your your father was, I believe was the title to get your attention. It was talked about how much lower your testosterone levels were. And <laughs> that's when you pull up some of these other studies that go even further back. And it's actually, well, technically you're actually like a third the man your grandfather was, right? And so this is not wow. something that men between 30 and 45 were dealing with, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago. And so um, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of speculation out there. I think it, there's still some things that, that need to be unpacked by that, but it is, um, uh, you know, it is definitely a problem and the market has kind of been responding to that. Uh, there's a JAMA study that showed like a double in prescriptions for men between 2010 and 2013. Um, and then since then it's doubled two more times, I believe for, you know, male testosterone therapy. So I think people are starting to see that and, and a lot of the benefits as far as, you know, the decreasing risk, cause there's risk to, to any treatment any medication or doing right, any kind of activity, right. but there's also risks to not taking action. I think that's where the biggest opportunity, what I find in working with the physicians, the best one I worked with, they had a very, um, a very good way of laying out both. Here's a risk. If you don't take action, here's a risk. If you do take action, let's decide what we're going to do here and then monitor yeah. from there. Well, and I think it's, it, there's no, uh, there's no right or wrong in, in my mind. I think back to something that Thomas Sowell said, uh, you know, great economist. He said, "There's, there's not a good or a bad decision. There's just trade-offs, and essentially that that's what we have to look at in in our health and uh, wellness journey. We have to say, okay, if I'm going to go on to some sort of hormone replacement therapy, there are downsides or side effects to that. There are also upsides. But what is the current downside or upside of me continuing on the current path that I'm in? I, I want to go back to what you were talking about earlier." where the, this massive decrease from our grandparents to our parents to us in overall testosterone. Now, there's, there are so many issues that are happening when testosterone or when really any of the hormone profile gets out of balance, but testosterone in particular for men. Talk a little bit about the symptoms that people experience, that men experience when testosterone uh, tanks like that. Yeah, um, I think some of them, you know, the sluggish, tired, fatigue, um, body composition changes, you know, they may see a, um, unexplained weight change, uh, you know, fat deposits, if you will, like the stomach, chest area, just kind of, uh, yeah. body composition, uh, body fat, I should say, uh, uh, increasing as a percent there drive just, just, the, just a factor of kind of, you know, and I'm not talking over the top here, but I do think, that courage, that, that healthy risk-taking ability, you know, um, that passivity yeah. that comes, uh, they're very passive all of a sudden, they don't really have anything from a psychological standpoint. What I've heard a lot of people comment on was they didn't really have anything kind of, this may sound like aggressive wording, but I mean, just in general in life, but worth fighting for, you know, they just don't have a, a fight yeah. to them. Yeah. Meaning what mm -hmm. are your personal beliefs, your values? And then maybe they do have them deep down, but they're just, they're just really stale. And, uh, I can recall, you know, a period of my life where I went through that and just kind of reflected back, like, man, a lot of things I really stood for, they were all good things. And I don't mean like, you know, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, aggressively fight them. But I mean, just really have that, that kind of little bit of, little bit of oomph in you that this is my beliefs and this is what I do. So I think, I think it's just something that um, I've seen a, a big difference as far as I think it all, all encompassing like that, that, that visit, the, the confidence and the, and the, the courage to kind of uh, have those things and have a little bit of drive behind you as you're doing those things. Wow. Yeah, I wonder I how you sure spot our that. Understand. Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure our listeners understand if, if you get to uh, in your thirties, forties and fifties, and you start to see that your energy is going down, you're depressed, you're not 
um, energetic. You don't have that drive towards the things that you used to be passionate about. Um, you've got excess adipose tissue around the midsection, or you've got excess adipose tissue around your um, your pecs. Uh, th- that's not normal. This is not how right. human beings were designed to be. Uh, this whole, whole idea of the dad bod, um, th- those are not normal things. Our biology was not structured in a way to where we were supposed to get um, you know, less aggressive and more fat uh, over time. We just, we're not built that way. And so if that happens, something's wrong. And it could be lifestyle factor, it could be nutrition factor, it could be uh, a movement factor, but there's definitely a hormone factor there. And we are not built to go downhill. Yes, over time, statistically speaking, we will lose some lean tissue, but the science also shows that if your hormone profile is correct and you are consistently strength training, you can maintain the majority of your muscle through life. In fact, uh, muscle is the ultimate, um, uh, well, I can't remember who said this the other day, something along the lines of that. If you, if you want to be wealthy in life, then you make money and you, you know, invest it. If you want to be wealthy relative to your health, then you build more muscle because muscle is the thing that keeps you healthy, right? You're not breaking your hips. You're not uh, uh, it, damaging yourself as you get older if you maintain that muscle. So I want to make sure our listeners are clear that if you are feeling any of these things, it's probably time to get tested. And this idea that, oh, well, I'm just resigned to go downhill because I'm 40 years old or I'm right. 50 years old. That, that's just not the case. Well, one thing I want to add to that too is just that our, like our bodies are cruel by nature. I mean, as a, if we're talking men for, for a minute, as a man's body composition increases, so there's their aromatase enzymes and the aromatase enzyme is what converts to yes. testosterone to estrogen. And as estrogen goes up, yep. what happens when a female's pregnant? Well, they put on more body fat and more water, again, much right. more excessive in a pregnancy, but the same thing's going to happen in men. And, and, uh, and so it's just this perpetual cycle that people can get in. And that's why, you know, I say, you know, as far as testing and, and, you know, stepping into those things. And also, like I said, right now, more in the supplementation um, side of, of the business or the, the, the approach, if you will, at the moment, but you need something to kind of spark that and push you into that direction, because maybe you were um, like me, maybe you were asleep at the wheel for five, 10 years and kind of woke up and said, that, whoa, what is going on? I'm like, this is, this mm. is a, I'm a different person now. And, and this thing's, this thing's going off the tracks, you know, a little bit. But how does somebody, uh, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, as somebody who's been in and out of the health industry, and when I'm out of the health industry, you know, I, I kind of noticed to take a, a look at the landscape. And if you're in the industry, you're constantly reminded of these things. But when you're not in it, and you build a tribe around getting that dad body and the things that are sold to you, this doesn't exist. This conversation, it doesn't exist on the map. And so how do you, how does one like wake up one day and, and, and knowing that the commercials you're seeing are not really addressing it, the television and all of that stuff, how does one wake up one day and think, I, I gotta get checked when all your friends are the exact same way you've built a tribe around this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great question. I think that's, uh, that's one of the things that is kind of a project of mine for the, you know, the next year or so is in, in many, uh, you know, I hope many others is just trying to get information out there. Cause to your point, mm. um, a lot of these treatments, uh, are, are not necessarily as talked about and they've been around a long time. So it's not a big, it's not a, a big market, if you will, from a pharmaceutical standpoint. Um, right. uh, so, you know, it, it, I will say, I, I just was, I never had those conversations to us in the industry. And then I probably was never prompted to bring it up to other people around me to your point, even though I was in the fitness industry uh-huh. and it's amazing how many of my, you know, close friends and family members, once they knew what I was doing said, you know, I think, I think I should look into this and check it. So I do think it's getting more mainstream. I think it's, it's starting to turn a corner to, you know, raise awareness, but it's nowhere near where, where it needs to be. So, you know, to answer your question, I think if they're listening to, to this or other great content out there, it's just spending a little bit of time in that self-reflection on how am I now versus five years from now, because you shouldn't change as much as maybe you're being told that it's okay to change. And I think there's an acceptance out there um, that really just doesn't need to be 
accepted as far as a, a decline in mental health, clarity, vigor, body composition, just how you carry yourself, you know, all, all of the above. Um, and I, and I, and I would like to add too, just with, with, with women, I don't want to get too far off, off track. If I, if I do reel me back in, but <laughs> the amount of women I've spoken with that just have, I, I feel horrible, um, for them. Some of them that have, have just been kind of hoaxed into believing that these irregular, uh, menstrual cycles and these extreme side effects that they have to deal with every month is just normal. Just another day at the in, in life for them is just completely unacceptable. Um, they do not have to go through that. We're taught, you know, uh, some of the things which, which we can go into, but some of them, uh, there's even over the counter creams that have given massive relief to people just by simply getting tested and finding out where their, where their imbalances yeah. are, uh, within their cycle. Men, you know, women, it's self-checking every month. They can kind of know how are my hormones uh, being regulated? Any irregularity, it means something's off. And if it's consistently happening, then yeah. there's something off between um, all the facets within the, the female's uh, cycle. Men, it's more of a kind of a gradual decline in most cases where they don't really have that, that check-in, if you will. And I think we're happy to not have that check-in on a yeah. recurring basis. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll take it. But, but with women, especially um, as well, really the relationship first and foremost between estrogen and progesterone uh, throughout the month is, is a real kind of, uh, there are services out there that can map that over the course of a, of a menstrual cycle to see why are they having specific symptoms and, and how they can address those things. And again, perpetual cycle, it's going to continue to get worse and body composition is going to continue to um, drive some of those imbalances that they're probably already experiencing. Well, yeah, Mur Murphy's law really plays into this. I mean, that if, I, if things will go from a state of organization to unorganized, right, that will continue to to uh, become perpetually worse if we don't step in and take care of it. And I think that's one of the most important things. If if you're a woman and let's say your menstrual cycle is off and or you're uh, having menses two or three times during the month, that's not normal. You need to get tested. If you're a man and you find that mood goes up and down, drive goes up and down, but then there's this overall trend line that goes down and you're not as motivated, you need to get tested because these are, these are things that should not be happening. If you're consistent with your uh, exercise, uh, and, and this doesn't have to be a lot, right? I mean, if you're consistently exercising two or three days a week, doing strength training, you should be able to maintain your muscle mass. But if your mm -hmm. muscle mass is dropping, if your body fat is going up, uh, even through a, a, a fairly consistent strength program, you need to get tested. So I, I think the, the key here, like you're talking about, Joe, is that we're, we really should not be living this pathetic life that far too many people are living. And when you wake up to that and say, hey, I don't need to feel this bad. What, what's wrong? Let's figure out what this, uh, what this solution is. Um, I want to jump to where you're at right now, because as we go into... Um, you know, this idea of supplementation. Now, I, again, I've kind of been a fence sitter for a period of time. I'm not anymore. Uh, there was a period of time where I, I loved supplements. I took a ton of supplements and then I said, no, I just want to do it all natural. And then I realized that the power and the impact that supplements can make on your body because we just don't get enough nutrients. And also there are some things that you can do to supplement that you would never get in, uh, you know, nutrition. Uh, I, I think about like curcumin uh, in, in, you know, by itself, curcumin is a very, very uh, a powerful anti-inflammatory, right? Right. Um, but if you get that in um, the, uh, what's the spice that you get a uh, decent Tumeric. amount of curcumin in? Turmeric. Turmeric um, mm. has a chemical in it that causes more inflammation than the curcumin can actually reduce. And mm. so getting turmeric um, you're, you're just canceling it out and actually causing more inflammatory response in your body. But if you take curcumin by itself, you can see an anti-inflammatory, uh, response in your body, which is phenomenal. Yeah. So I've, I've really, you know, swung way on the other end of the pendulum where I would, you know, for a long time, I was like, nah, just do it all natural. But yeah, there's, there's a lot to the supplementation. And if you can optimize how you feel on a regular basis with a few pills, powders, you know, <laughs> 
why not? Like it's right. just, I look at it as part of what I ingest on a, on a regular basis. Uh, talk a little bit about where you're at right now with the supplementation. And, and if you could give us a high level overview of uh, what you guys are, are working on and, and maybe what some of the top products are that you're working with. Yeah, I uh, no, appreciate that. I'll definitely go through that. I want to want to kind of tie them a little bit together because this will maybe maybe uh, fit into why I'm doing what I'm doing now and how it's going to tie back. So one of the things that yeah. is resulting in some of the hormone imbalances is uh, varying in micronutrients. So I'll give you a quick example. I'll use I use women as an example because this one is is I think is a pretty good one, and then it'll kind of tie to the some of the products and things we have. But so if you let's just say a female uh, presents themselves with um, estrogen dominance. This just basically means too much estrogen in their body. You draw their blood serum, but their estrogen levels are low. They're in their mid forties. Their estrogen levels are low. Like this doesn't make sense. Why are they estrogen dominant? Estrogen levels low. Well, estrogen met- methylation, which is basically the clearing of estrogen out of your body. There's four actual stages and that happens. Well, the top three that happen there are different micronutrients that help with the efficiency of your body to clear that estrogen. So again, blood mm-hmm. serum shows that I have low estrogen levels, but think of it as a, uh, a drain in the bottom of the sink. If the drain, which is like the third phase of estrogen methylation, that's the, the drain analogy. If that drain, when we get down there is clogged and I have the water running, like eventually, even if the water's barely running, it's eventually going to spill over in my sink. Right. Yeah. So it's the same thing with though. A lot of those micronutrients and things that help and lifestyle changes will actually enhance estrogen methylation and clearing of that. Therefore, you'll have some symptom relief as far as that estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance is, again, we talked about like the the irregular uh, cycles, loss in libido, uh, excessive weight gain, that's unexplained acne, things of that nature. So, So to kind of take that to the next level, that's kind of some of our products assist with that, but really, um, there are some kind of phase two plans that will really tie that in together, but we do have some at the moment that can kind of tie into some of that specifically. But um, as we transition, you know, over to first attachment and what we're doing right now, when I first got involved, what I was really excited about it. So I kind of saw that the extreme kind of everyday person um, really doesn't have the knowledge um, or the access to understand what a good quality product is on the market to kind of help them uh, through these lifestyle changes. You know, we know we're all on the go throughout the day. We're missing meals. We have kids. We got to get that work on in really quick. And so this is where some of our products can kind of tie in there. Um, I'll give you an example or an analogy that I kind of talked about before we hopped on. Uh, I look at supplementation or at least our supplements because they were originally designed and geared more towards um, professional athletes to help them uh, perform at that peak level. And the analogy I use is, you know, Michael Jordan, he had the Air Jordans when he was playing in the NBA, he wore them and the same, you know, kids on the high school or the the schoolyard uh, playing ball could wear the exact same shoes. So in the same sense, why can't supplements that were designed for professional athletes and peak performance individuals be used in everyday, uh, you know, everyday health people, just everyday life to help them kind of get the most out of their, out of their days and out of their workouts. So that's kind of where I see where our, our core customer early on has been that more lack of a way of putting it kind of hardcore athlete, et cetera. But, but um, there is an opportunity out there for these. So to talk a little about one of the, one of the products out there is kind of uniquely um, named uh, field rations. And basically what field rations is um, it's designed for what's called an intro workout. And so there's a certain uh, uh, carbohydrate a product in there that's a lower molecular weight. So it basically gets into the bloodstream faster. So it can be used for fuel um, almost instantly on your body. And there's some essential amino acids and sodium in there just to help you get through your workout. So that person who's like working, you know, maybe they had a lunch at 12, maybe they had to skip lunch and you work till three or four o'clock and then you popped into the gym, your body is so depleted and your blood sugar is probably extremely low to when you're exercising, you're going to really break down a lot of that muscle tissue during the exercise and you're probably not going to repair and recover as fast. And it's going to kind of be this, again, this perpetual thing where we're just tearing, wearing and tearing a lean body mass, which is probably, it's better than nothing, but probably not going to really help our overall metabolic uh, benefits. We're trying to get out of it. The other thing is people will say, okay, well, I'm going to grab a protein bar. So will that help me? Well, because that's going to help me quote unquote build muscle. Well, not necessarily because our body's going to see that protein and convert it to keeping it high level, but convert it to 
carbohydrate source, use it as glucose, uh, break it down into glucose, use that as energy to fuel us for our workout. So yes, when we, when we paid five bucks for that bar, it was in the form of protein, but really it was just the same as eating a carbohydrate as far as our fuel system was concerned. So then you plug and, in something and that like, takes a really long time too, right? You know, to, to, to produce glucose from protein through gluconeogenesis. That's an, that's an extremely complex process that the body has to go through. And that's not a, that's not a fast acting thing. So by the time you get to the point where your body might be able to use that for usable energy, that, that doesn't, that that's most likely not going to happen during a workout. Right. Right. And so that's where, um, field rations really came in. So, you know, that, that typical, you know, that set, that person who's just kind of exhausted and needs some kind of fuel intra workouts, so that means just during the workout, they can use it. You know, it's think of it as, um, you know, you see a lot of, uh, uh, runners or, or people of that nature using, um, not the best carbohydrate source during their workouts. Yeah. Well, in field rations, um, it is a, a different form of carbohydrate. This is more regu- readily available specifically for muscle glycogen. So to help them uh, through the workout, there's some essential amino acids too. So when we're breaking down the body, what is the, when the body's breaking down your muscle tissue, it's breaking it down essentially into that amino acid form. That's how that that conversion kind of starts to work. Well, we're going to put that into your bloodstream right there while you're working out. So it's going to use a supplement to, you know, fuel that workout instead of necessarily, um, you know, cannibalizing more of the the tissues. And, and you know, if you took it for a week or a couple of weeks, you, you know, are you going to look in the mirror a month later and you look like Superman, right? No, that's not going to happen, but you got to think about, you know, four, three, four days a week over the course of, you know, time that's going to compound each time and help you get through it. Not to mention, you know, the difference between, doing maybe nine reps and 12 reps or something to that effect, because you just have some yeah. extra fuel to push through that. You can really get your, your capacity out of your workouts that maybe you could not get before. And so I think those are things that, um, for, for all levels to, to consider, it was a big one for me with high school athletes. I noticed, um, uh, at the time I, I actually was, when I was working with them, just looking at this, their food intake was just so, so depleted, so low compared to what the, their workload was. And and to see just giving them something, um, gosh, I had them eating fruity pebbles, like dry, just dry cereal, um, throwing that in their bag and having that. Cause it was just, let's get some kind of something in your, to raise your blood sugar with some good sodium, just to kind of get the fluids going in your body. And, uh, you can see a big interest. So any, anyways, I kind of bounced around there, but that's, that's one, um, one really good one. Um, that, that so, we see. so back up a little bit on this. So the sodium is extremely important. And I think a lot of people uh, for years have had a misunderstanding when it comes to sodium, because, you know, for years we were told don't don't eat very much sodium, you shouldn't uh, intake much, you need to limit your salt. And it's probably the exact opposite of that what, relative to the way that we uh, should be eating because sodium has such a major impact on our overall health, fitness, uh, our ability to, uh, to execute ex- uh, workouts. Um, you know, these sodium potassium pumps that are working to uh, shuttle nutrients across the cell. If your potassium levels are low, if your sodium levels are low, you're not going to function as well. Your muscles are not going to contract the same. Talk a little bit about um, the, the sodium piece and why that's so important when somebody's strength training, when somebody's doing this workout. Sure. Yeah. A couple of things with sodium. Um, one is when, uh, just to kind of touch on in the the past we were talking about sodium is a key, a key factor in the, um, uh, thyroid function. So if that's short, that's kind of some of the raw materials that helps, um, Mm -hmm. as we're bodies creating thyroids or our thyroid hormones. Um, the other one is, um, related to blood volume. So helping transfer, um, basically what you get when you feel your muscles kind of hardening and contracting, or, you know, maybe guys call it a pump, right. I don't, you know, uh, yeah. I guess nowadays yeah. it's male men and women are calling it a pump, but, um, just kind of getting that blood, yeah. that blood flow and that good squeeze, like that's going to be definitely sodium in the water, uh, going, uh, transitioning through there and also lowering your helping lower your, your blood sugar levels. Uh, uh so again, your glucose is in your bloodstream, but when it binds with water and sodium kind of helps that transfer, or transport mechanism to pull the glucose into a stored carbohydrate form in your muscle tissues, glycogen, and then that lowers your blood sugar. So pre, you know, before a workout, when you're eating food, the better your system is at doing that. It can, if it doesn't have sodium, it can't really uptake, um, the, uh, the, the glucose or blood sugar, if you will, to use a basic term, uh, it can't really update that and store it into 
to your muscle without the sodium helping uh, transition it and store it into the muscle to be used later as energy during exercise. That's why people will have that flat look or some days you wake up in the morning or walk through the day and you, you, your shirt's off and you kind of look flat and you know you have no vascularity and you're kind of maybe feel a little yeah. doughy. Um, or the other day, like, wow, like things look really tight and kind of a little, 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 little bit of vein, like healthy amount of veins, a not little, like the freaky, you, scary you guy, a little more buff, a yeah. little more buff, yeah, yeah. got a little more, a yeah. little more Tia. So kind of high level, that's just, you know, essentially how that's, how that helps, um, overall with circulation and, and, and things relative to that. And it's going to help you perform much longer, um, when you are in the gym and trying to do those activities. Yeah. And I think the, the essential amino acids that you talked about, um, that are, that are in that, what, what was the name of the product again? Build rations. Build rations. So I read something, and I, I, I'm I'm at the point now where I read so much that I, years ago uh, I was all into just reading the studies, and I would remember who 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 studied it and who did what, and I could rattle that stuff off. My my learning nowadays is all over the place. I'm reading books on business and marketing, and you know everything. So I have a hard time uh, when I say that I read a study because. My old self is saying, don't say that unless you can reference where it is. But I did read a couple of studies recently that talked about the impact of these essential amino acids, either pre, during the workout, intra workout or post workout, and what an impact that made because you were, you were sparing the muscle, if nothing else, right? But you were also starting to upregulate up that uh, uh, the metabolic process that uh, starts to grow the muscle quicker, right? So you are starting that process and getting those hormones kicked in so that you can build muscle over time. So uh, what a really cool formula. This, I'm, I'm, this is the first I'm hearing of this, that you guys have put this together with the sodium, the carbohydrates, and these essential amino acids. But well, um, one it, of, it makes I, a lot of sense scientifically. I, yeah, I was going to mention too. I want to make sure I give my analogies to where they where they came from. Justin Harris, the founder of First Attachment, he uses this analogy that you know back in the early two thousands, late nineties, it was all BCAs A's were the were the rave, like branched amino right. acids. Well, and there still are some branched amino acids in that in the in the product. Um, the best way to describe you, you show up to a job site, right? Branched amino acids, like the the foreman is kind of telling everyone what to do, yep. right. And where to go. And essential amino acids, you want to yep. picture that as like, that's like the raw materials. That's the, the lumber and the workers and stuff like that. So you can have a foreman on site, but if there's no like raw materials to actually build the house, or in this case to rebuild the muscle, it's really not going to do much. And so I think that's what science has proven. That's why I've seen a, a shift at least in, in the products that are out there that, that have a good, um, good formulation for that. And, um, even, even if you look at some of the, the ingredients in it between, there's a really super fast acting carbohydrate and then one that's kind of more moderate and, and slower digesting. So there's a really good overlay there to someone's profile when they're working out to help them give them that, that burst that they may need. And again, when I say burst, it might be too strong of a word because it's still not like anything over the top your body can't handle. Um, and then like a steady, uh, transition from there. So talk about uh, this formulation, um, in contrast to, what a lot of people do when they go into a workout, because the scenario that you, you painted the picture of earlier of, Hey, I had lunch, then maybe I didn't eat anything for a while. Now I'm going to the gym and it's been three, four or five hours. My energy is pretty low. And so on the way to the gym, I'm either going to stop by the gas station or I'm going to go into the, uh, to the, to the little smoothie bar or the cafe at the, the gym. And I'm going to get the, uh, energy drink. And then I'm going to slam that monster. That's got, God knows how many milligrams of caffeine well above what our intake should be for the day. Um, totally different energetic pathways that we're talking about here versus right. what you're talking about in intra workout. So discuss the difference between what, what you're putting out there in this particular supplement relative to someone else, like just slamming this high sugar, high caffeinated drink. Yeah. In a lot of those cases, um, the, the high sugar, high caffeinated, right. You're going to, First and foremost, from a, if we take the sugar, right? First, your your body's not going to be able to use all that sugar at once, and so it's just going to wreak some havoc, probably cause some unwanted inflammation, and definitely going to cause a, an unwanted crash at some point during your workout. Most of the time, probably halfway, if that, um, from that standpoint. So that's going to be the one of the first obstacles. You know, the other is the the caffeine just really kind of overstimulating the body in that in that sense. Um, uh, we we actually have a pre workout that does have caffeine in it. But there's 
other things uh, in there like L-theanine that kind of help balance that response so that you don't get such more such a fight or flight response. You still get the benefits yeah. of having clear mind and focus when you're training. Um, uh, so caffeine does have some positive benefits to that, but if you don't have things built into what you're taking in to counteract the just overdrive of cortisol, um, and the stress response, then you're, you're probably again, going to kind of put your, your body in a little, in, not a little in too much of an overdrive. And then you're also just not going to feel good. I mean, especially I know me, you know, once you, maybe it's an old guy thing, but once you get a little bit, a little bit older, um, I don't think even too much, but it just doesn't, you know, one, when you're younger, it's definitely not healthy. There's, there's more and more, uh, ER trips happening in younger people, um, just from, you know, as you mentioned, just overloading on caffeine. Um, but also, um, let's just say that's not the case. That's not the extreme case. You're still just going to have that jittery feel. You're going to have that kind of sick, that, that wiry shaky feel. I mean, I don't, I don't know really too many people that like that or, or like that for, you know, wouldn't want that every day. And then you're associating that with going to the gym. So you already have enough obstacles to go to the gym. Now you're going to pound this drink that makes you feel like not the way you want to feel. Um, and then also just doesn't support your overall, um, you know, health goals that you're trying to accomplish with that. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're spiking cortisol. You, you're obviously getting the dopamine, a dopaminogenic uh, response as well, but you're getting cortisol at such a high level. Um, and, and, and I'm not, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to caffeine, but right. it, it, it's got to be dose dependent, right? I mean, and I, I love the fact that you talked about L-theanine, which is a phenomenal uh, amino acid to help drive uh, the, that calmness and that focus, which is the, probably the most important thing that you need when you're going into the gym. Far too many people... Um, I mean, I think back to when I got into training, there was never a point in time where you would do a set and then you would sit there and stare at a screen afterwards. And right. it just blows me away that, 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 that becomes, that's become the norm instead of training and getting into your body and understanding what's going happening. I did this particular set. Now I'm resting or, or maybe I'm mobilizing in between another, another body part. Um, what, what, what's happening far too often is people are not focused on what they're doing and then they wonder what, why they're not getting results afterwards. Well, not to mention, right. Like, you know, we were talking earlier, you know, there are some benefits if you, if you need caffeine to get to the workout, but, um, you got to have it combined with other things that are going to naturally fuel your body as well, because eventually your body's going to need more and more and more. And it's just going to get used to that. Um, you know, as it continues to, uh, 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 adapt to that caffeine level. You're going to need more and more of that to get to the same, the same response. And at some point, you know, you're just not going to have enough. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the supplements that you guys are, are, are focusing on and that you put out there. And I, I love how you, you know, brought it in, like we talked about before that there's, there's lifestyle components there's supplement components. There's the hormonal replacement uh, therapy. There's all of these different aspects that, that play into it. And with the Medi Spa that I was a part of, and and also when I went through hormone replacement therapy, it was not just one thing. Um, hormone replacement was one aspect of it, but there were a significant amount of supplements that I uh, took along with it. I was working with a couple of diet or one dietitian, one nutrition coach um, that was had me on a specific protocol. Uh, sometimes stepping up some of these mm -hmm. supplements uh, over time, and then some supplements I would. Uh, you know, dosing high and then stepping down over time uh, based on what my blood work was showing. Um, so I, I, I think this is all super important. What's another one, uh, Joe, that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, one, one of the products that I really like, um, personally, I'm a little, little biased to it too, is a, a product called Suppressor. And it's a glucose disposal agent. So again, it was designed more for um, peak physique uh, competitors. So that are trying to get to excessively right. low body composition. That's who it was originally designed for, but in the general population, and even I'm, I'm not uh, planning to compete at any time soon, but, but I like to use it. And the reason being is um, one of the main ingredients in it is our uh, berberine HCL, which is 1500 milligrams of berberine in there. And which has been shown to uh, be equivalent to about a thousand milligrams of metformin and metformin is a um, pharmaceutical for glucose disposal management. It's usually given, you know, before insulin, as far as like managing someone who's pre-diabetic or maybe early in the diabetic stages, uh, usually around that dosage. Um, however, one of the main side effects is um, GI distress. And so a lot of people, even in the anti-aging community, or they're extremely healthy and their blood sugar is good, but they want to make it great. Um, they will use metformin or have it prescribed, but they just can't tolerate it. Now there's different levels of metformin. You can have 
an immediate release. You can have an extended release. There's actually even there's products in the market or medications in the market that are in a like a lotion form um, to help relieve that. Many people um, get good results from it, but there's also many people that that don't and they just can't. Uh, they just have a lot of GI distress, constipation, um, you know, just gut issues that kind of build up, and so suppressor has the equivalent effects to that and some of the formulation in there that about a thousand or one gram of metformin does um, as far as blood sugar regulation, which is a, a really, really good product for really everyone. Um, I shouldn't say everyone, but almost everyone in America uh, can benefit from because, you know, when you look at the, I think the, especially the way that people eat these days, right? Right. right. Yeah. Well, that and the activity level too. Right. So one of the things was, um, uh, there's a, I want to, I believe it was a 4%. I'm trying to remember my scale now, but there's a, there is a study out there you can find where it shows the levels at, from 86. So you're fasting glucose from 86 to hundred. And once you're hundred, you're considered, you know, diabetic, but the, the percentages continue to compound as low as 86, as far as your risk factors uh, to have diabetes. So even if you're, you know, your doctor, if you're at like a 97, they'll say you're good. Well, really you're just a couple of points away. And so, yeah. you know, glucose management is really your, your blood glucose, your fasting glucose. Those are things that are um, really can wreak havoc on your, your overall health and then cause a lot of long-term problems, but also you're definitely not going to be optimal at those high blood sugar levels. So that's a really good proactive. Um, well, I guess not even proactive. It can be reactive, proactive, just thing to have in the body. It's all, all natural ingredients. There's, uh, you know, cinnamon, a couple other seeds, alpha lipoic acid. These are all things that are are just you know natural uh, uh out there in the world that you can you can use yeah i i think that um sorry we lost you for a second and then it came back and all the audio came right at once um oh. so i love uh I, I love how you talk about so most of the stuff it it's actually found in nature and we're just extracting some of the things and putting them in there um blood sugar is really a, a major problem today i i find that Far too many people, uh, and, and this is, you know, looking at several lab profiles uh, uh, from clients over the years, and then also uh, when I was in the Medispa uh, industry, it, far too many people don't have good regulation of their blood sugar. And, you know, doctors have, have kind of, just like they said, okay, well, we're looking at normative ranges of testosterone, and we're going to step that down over the years because most people don't have the testosterone that the parents and the grandparents had. It's the same thing with blood sugar. The, the pre-diabetic has shrunk to like a, a, a smaller range, but the reality is you, you, you're you probably sitting in a pre-diabetic range when you're right. above 80, right? Um, and But now nowadays they're saying, well, maybe it's 86, maybe it's 87. But the reality is anything that's sitting or radiate on a regular basis, you're most likely causing a lot of oxidative stress to your body and you're potentially causing significant damage to the insulin receptors. And far too often people are just now now there are a lot of studies out there that have shown that through dietary changes through medication through supplementation through exercise you, you can bring back a lot of those those damaging effects right but for most people if they don't even know where their blood sugar is at on a regular basis they're constantly just abusing themselves with more uh, mm. of this um, high blood sugar on a regular basis so that's a really cool what what's the name of that product that you're talking about yeah, it's called suppressor. Um, suppressor. Suppressor. Okay. Yep. And the thing that, that you mentioned there about it um, that I do want to mention is that it's a different mechanism of action primarily that berberine works on. So those receptors, you know, think of it as like a, uh, like a like a mitt and a ball going into it, right? Or like your, you know, uh, as far as a, a receptor goes, wrapping around that, and that's kind of how the insulin can transfer out of your blood into the muscle cell and be stored for late, you know, energy use later, just for kind of an overview yeah. of okay. people that are listening out there. So if it's not in your blood and it goes into your muscle, then your blood sugar is what higher or lower? Well, it's going to be lower. Berberine works on the efficiency, if you will, of that receptor. Those receptors get damaged and worn down over time um, from being just hammered with too much um, irregularities and in, in eating and things of that nature. Um, we're just kind of time on task just over life. And so that's, it does work on like the receptor point of it, which is, um, means that essentially your body, your pancreas will not have to produce as much insulin to regulate your blood sugar over time 
as much as um, it would have been in the past if you don't, if you didn't, you know, improve that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, this is fascinating stuff. And Joe, I mean, we're, we're coming up on our time uh, today for this particular episode, but I, I know for sure we need to have you back on to talk about this stuff. And I know at the beginning, before we started recording, you said, Hey, Steve, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, that this episode doesn't come across as me trying to sell my products. And, and um, I don't think it did. <laughs> That's never our goal. Right. But um, I do think to Miles point earlier, People need to know this stuff because it's right. not widely uh, publicized of that supplementation, all of these different things, they, they can provide such a major impact to the overall health and well-being of, of uh, the, uh, just the, the, the general population, right? A lot of people in the bodybuilding community know what these things are, um, but then outside of the gym culture, people just don't understand what they right. can do to optimize their life. And they, they're living these quiet lives of desperation. And all it would take is getting with the right nutrition coach, the right, uh, you know, supplements for, for a period of time. And it builds up in your system and you start to feel significantly better. And the thing that I would tell our listeners is, you know, if you, if you are in this state, of lower energy, if you're in this state of depression, if you're in any of these things that we've talked about, you don't have to live there. Six months from now, if you're doing the right protocols, you can feel much better than you feel right now. And that's one of the reasons why I, I love this conversation and I wanna have you come back on and talk about some of these other supplements that you guys are, are putting out there because I think it's it's so educational for people to, to know because all they're getting on a day-to-day -day basis is, commercials for McDonald's commercials for, you know, whatever else it is. And we, we've got to combat that, right? We've right. got to pre create content that we put out there to educate the population uh, so that they understand how they can live a better life. So uh, we got to have you back on to talk a little bit more. About yeah, just this, real fast. Uh, I live in a rural community. I live in a yeah. rural community and this is not here at all. Yeah. It's yeah. no way here. That's a good point. Well, we're yeah, I think it. we're bringing it to that. There you go. Right now. Yeah, I, th I think that, you know, that's that's overall uh, one of my goals. Like we are in the process of uh, spinning up different, you know, ebooks, just re resources. Um, our first attachment YouTube channels launching and then, you know, we'll have more. Um, I have a, a, a channel that's a little little bit smaller at the moment. Um, it's just simple. It's my name talks with Joe Miller, <laughs> pretty easy to find. And, um, what simple, I'll do is I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll do uh, treatment reviews and, and things of that nature. And one of the things I'm really passionate about too, is just, I like, it doesn't, you know, as far as uh, going back to, uh, treatments and things, it, even when I was specifically in that field, it did not matter as much to me if you were using my company or not, what I wanted you to be able to do is be equipped to have a better conversation with your physician, because even mm -hmm. my family members, I, you know, I'd love to come back on, or I'm working on some content right now, just basics of how to interpret blood work as a just normal person and non-medical professional to be able to have yeah. a, de a respectful, a decent conversation with your physician and just to ask the right questions. Does this do this? Does this do that? You don't need a medical degree. We could you know, you can really kind of unpack that in, in, in probably about 10, 15 minutes if, if you have the right, the right uh, layout of the content and, and how to understand it. Cause really everything on that, it's a lot of numbers and, and, and acronyms, but they all kind of tie together in a way for the most part. And once you understand that um, it's a pretty quick, quick, pretty quick read and pretty quick learning. So that's something I'm, I'm passionate about, you know, uh, going to be doing for the foreseeable future, just trying to get the word out there and educate people on it. Yeah, that that's awesome. Well, Joe, uh, you know, one of the things that we we like to do with our guests, uh, because, you know, we believe that personal evolution is something that takes time. Uh, but it, it it's something that, uh, you know, we have to disrupt and we've got to make some some of these changes. And so we'd like to ask our question or our guests a rapid fire set of questions about their personal evolution. So uh, with this rapid fire set of questions, uh, you, you get one word or one sentence. Oh, boy. Answer. It challenges all right see so yeah you ready to go uh, i think <laughs> all right um so a, a, as you've evolved in your personal evolution what is something that you used to believe that you no longer do failure 
and no longer believe that there's failure. You just, you just continue to move forward. There's only outcomes. There's no failures. I think I stole that from Tony Robbins, but I'm, I'm going to still steal it. I still like it. So he said it better than that. Good. So we're, we're going to call it a Joe Miller there. I like that. There you go. All right. Um, how do you tap into your innate creative power? Collaboration. Mm, beautiful. Uh, so we really never stop evolving. Uh, what do you do on this path of evolution to show yourself compassion along the way? Hmm. I don't think of one word I can't. <laughs> you can use. I think just sentence. grace, just grace, progress, check in, Ooh. celebrate the wins, give myself grace. There you go. I like. I need to do it more than I more than I do. If I'm being I think, honest, I think it's a habit we all need to get into. Right. Uh, last question in the rapid fire. So, if you could go back three years from now or three years ago, uh, give yourself former or your former self advice that would push your evolution forward. What would it be? Oh, that's a good one. I, I really felt pretty fortunate these last couple of years. I think, I think, um, yeah, geez, that's a good one. Last three years. You know, I'd probably say the, the balance in, uh, servitude outside of the workplace. So the last year, I won't, this is way longer than a word, but I've done a lot of volunteer work with uh, FCA Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and and uh, it's just been super, super life changing for me. Um, I've always been, you know, uh, it, it it just brought me to a whole nother level. So I think I think three years ago, if I would have engaged further with just just serving for the sake of that, I've always taken that approach in my work, um, but you know, I was still receiving something back either in the form of a paycheck or something of that nature, career growth. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I think when I, when I really doubled down on just getting out for the sake and the right, just for servitude, um, that's, it's something a lot deeper. That's, that definitely changes you from the inside out. Beautiful. Well, Joe, last question we have for you. So this one isn't part of our rapid fire. So you can take your time on this one at, at evolve. We believe that personal evolution happens by stacking one simple habit on top of another. It doesn't have to be uh, difficult. It just has to, uh, you know, be simple and, and executable. So what is one thing that if our listeners walked out of this episode and said, Joe said to do this, and I'm going to do this one habit, what's that one thing you want our listeners to walk away with? Um, so I'm so blessed to have the wife that I have because I'm going to steal hers. It is, it is, a, it is a great thing. Her, her thing that she's keeps saying in every tough situation, whatever it is, business, family life, whatever is the next best thing. So I would just say, whatever that challenge is that you have out there or that obstacle, it's just, what's the next best thing I can do right now? Is it, I'm going to put my shoes on. Is it, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to walk to the corner and back. Like what, if it's, you're trying to get at whatever that is just at, uh, checking in on that question. What is the next best thing I can do? It's a great habit to start. I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're always having positive momentum with that one. Well, Joel Miller, uh, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Um, you, you know, great to have you. And uh, I learned a lot through this uh, episode and a great conversation uh, about uh, overall health, hormonal health and supplementation. Uh, and folks, and on that note, it is time for us to wrap up another episode of the Evolve podcast. I want to thank Joel Miller for coming on today and my co-host, uh, W. Miles Riley. Uh, Joe, you've got a lot of great things going on. You referenced them earlier. What's the best way for people to follow you and to uh, continue to stay connected with you? Yeah, uh, talks with Joe Miller on YouTube, uh, Joe M. Miller on Instagram, or through First Attachment. Uh, if you put in First Attachment, you'll see our website, YouTube, any of those cases or any of those uh, spots, uh, whatever you remember of those, all of the above. Um, I will be kind of... Uh, from time to time, co-hosting on the Team Troponin channel as well. So uh, any of those uh, resources, anyone has questions and I uh, would love, love to get questions or if anyone leaves questions on this episode, uh, Steve, you could fire more my, my way. I'd be happy to put together some content to help answer those. That's really the best, uh, the best feeling is what you can put out specifically what people are looking for. Yeah, that's awesome. And we'll put all those links in the show notes. Uh, and to Joe's point, we would love to have your questions. We always love it when our listeners reach out to us, uh, give us feedback. What did you like? What did what would you like to see more of? Uh, because we enjoy creating content that you are going to 
uh, engage with and that you're going to put into your life to evolve. Uh, so once again, Joel Miller, thanks for jumping on uh, with us. Uh, remember, folks, that it does take time and consistency to evolve. But first, you have to disrupt. And now it's time for you to get out there and evolve. And evolve. Thank you for listening to the Evolve Podcast. If you like this episode, share it with your friends. Follow us on Instagram at evolve underscore cast and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcasting app. And now it's time for you to get out there and evolve.